Automated testing is a tricky subject to cover, especially in game development. Some developers swear by writing automated tests, while others think it's a complete waste of time. That is not what this video is about. In this video, I'm simply going to show you how I write tests for Unity ECS code. Now, bear in mind, Unity ECS is still in its infancy, so some of the code here is subject to change. Well, without further ado, let's get right into the example. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of Unity ECS. If you don't, you should check out my video called, What is Unity ECS? That should get you on the right track. To keep this video as simple as possible, we'll be writing tests for a system that comes pre-packaged with Unity ECS. Let's press play now and use the entity debugger to check out Unity's built-in systems so we can get a better idea of what we'll need to get started. Without writing any code, Unity has already generated a world for us called Default World and populated it with a number of systems. Clicking on a particular system within the entity debugger reveals what kind of entities it operates on. The one that we'll be testing in this video is the Move Forward system. Systems operate selectively on a subset of entities based on their components. The Move Forward system operates on all entities that match either one of the following component archetypes. The first consists of the Move Forward, Move Speed, Position, and Rotation components. And the second consists of the Move Forward, Move Speed, Position, and Heading components. The rotation and heading components are used to represent the forward vector of the entity. The move speed component is used to determine how fast the entity should move forward. And the move forward component simply acts as a tag. During each frame, the move forward system calculates a new value for each entity's position component using the entity's forward vector and speed. This causes the entity to, well, move forward. Our tests will focus on entities with the second archetype. To get started, let's create a folder to hold our tests. I'll call it Tests. Next, let's create an assembly definition file that we can use to define how our tests should be compiled. I'll call this Tests2 so it matches the folder name. Now, we need to make sure that it's configured as a test assembly so Unity doesn't include it in any of the player builds. We can do this by clicking on the assembly file and toggling the Test Assemblies checkbox in the inspector. Because these will be editor tests, we'll want to make sure that this assembly is only included in the editor. So scroll down to Platforms, toggle the Select All checkbox, uncheck any platform, and then toggle the checkbox next to Editor. We're almost ready to write some code. We just need to include a few assemblies so they'll be available to our test classes. The assemblies we need are unity.entities, unity.entities.test, unity.mathematics, and unity.transforms. Now we're ready to write our first test. Create a class called Move Forward System Tests and open it in your IDE now. I've cleared out all of the boilerplate code that's created by Unity, so we can have a clean starting point. The first thing we'll want to do is mark this class with the test fixture attribute, since it'll be holding multiple tests. Now, we can leverage a special test fixture class that's included in the unity.entities.tests package. The ECS text fixture generates a test world and an entity manager and stores them in protected field variables that we can use throughout our tests. 
The last thing we should do before we write our first test is add a category to the test fixture. This will allow us to filter the test runner so it will be easier to find our tests. Now we can write our first test. This one will be a base case that we'll use to get us started. I'll call it when move speed equals zero then entity doesn't move. There are dozens of naming conventions for tests, so if this one doesn't float your boat, go ahead and call it whatever you'd like. Now let's go ahead and create an entity using the archetype we saw earlier. Again, this variable m underscore manager is provided by the base class. It holds an instance of the entity manager that belongs to the test world. Our entity should have the following components. Move forward, move speed, position, and heading. Now, let's give our entity's components some values so it's clear what this method is testing. Remember, this is a base case, so all of the values should be set to zero. All right, we've completed the arrange step of our test. Now, we can act on our system by using the world variable, which comes from the base class and holds an instance of the test world, to create a move forward system and call its update method. Now, we can assert that the entity hasn't moved by checking its current position. Perfect. Our first test is complete. Let's switch back to the editor and run it. Beautiful. Let's switch back to the IDE and write one more test. This one will actually test forward movement. I'll call it when move speed equals one then entity moves forward. And I'm just going to copy and paste the code from our base case test. We want to test forward movement, so the first thing we need to do is change the move speed. I'll set it equal to 1, just like the name implies. Now, we need to give our entity a direction to move in. I'll initialize the heading component so the entity moves along the x-axis. Lastly, we need to update our assert. Since the entity should now be moving along the x-axis at a rate of 1 unit per second, and the move forward system uses delta time to calculate position, we know that the value of x should be equal to delta time. And that's all there is to it. Let's switch back to the editor and rerun the tests. Beautiful. If you'd like to learn more about Unity ECS, then I highly recommend checking out my tutorial series, where I'll show you how to create a survival shooter game using Unity ECS. The project files for that series and this video are available for download to all of my Tier 2 patrons. If you'd like to grab the code and support this channel at the same time, then please consider becoming a patron today. So that was a quick look at some basic tests of Unity ECS code. If you'd like to see some more advanced examples, feel free to hop on the Discord server and let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. And for more Unity tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. I'll catch you in the next video. 
Thank you to all my patrons, and a special shout out to Chance McDonald, Glasswell Entertainment, Richard Stance, and Yakov.